TV5 is answering your questions. Tonight, Joe Chioto is launching a new weekly segment called Good Question. You ask us and we investigate. Following two shootings out at Oak Park Mall in just one month, many of you asked what's being done to keep shoppers safe. The mall tells me they're still investigating the incidents, the response, and their safety protocols to decide what, if anything, needs changed. So right now, everything is the same as it was two months ago, despite that string of violence. That doesn't answer your questions? Well, it didn't answer ours either. So I went to security experts and police who walked me through what they want to see happen. All I knew I had to get to my daughter. I was trying to look for my dad. I told her run. I got really scared. Two shootings right near the mall entrance. I just hear like three loud like bangs and then the glass just shattered. In just two months. I'll never forget hearing that and then hearing people running and screaming above us. It was an eye opener. Shattered glass and trails of blood remained, but the suspects immediately took off. Now, more than a month after the latest shooting, still no arrests. The Overland Park Police Department telling me the victims did not cooperate with us. We wish victims would start talking to the police. There is a difference between snitching and reporting a crime. What goes through your mind? A frustration, an annoyance? It's very frustrating, as you could well imagine. OP police officer Bill Cohen is part of the crime prevention unit. A lot of problems with uh, guns and shootings, was lighting a factor, um, was signage a factor. With those same criminals on the streets in OP, should you still feel safe shopping at the mall? Well, Oak Park wouldn't let our cameras inside due to security reasons. They would only answer our questions via email. Here's what I learned. Oak Park officials say the mall has state-of-the-art cameras, does lockdown and security drills with retailers, and utilizes a full-time professional security team. The mall also partners with Overland Park Police, hiring off-duty officers to patrol the interior and exterior. OP Police telling me two of their uniformed officers are there every day. We did go to another source as well to ask, where do we go from here? You have to look at the fact that two happened in a short period of time. So I have to say that means we have a vulnerability. Here. Michael Tabman is a former FBI special agent, now turned security consultant. That could have been me, that could have been someone I love. He's developed security plans at some of the biggest malls in America. What would you like to see happen here? Let's look at the patterns, let's create a profile of the shooting. Tabman says prevention is key. Did both shootings happen at a similar time, in the same area, with the same suspect profile? If so, security will need to be on the lookout for that threat. We know how to profile a shopper, yeah. and sometimes people don't fit that profile. We took a drive around the mall with Tabman. He showed us how he would assess such a business to keep it safe. More lighting, more cameras, more patrol, uh, maybe uh, restricting access to the mall during certain hours. Someone like us right now, driving around, we should attract the attention of security because what are we doing? We, you know, we're clearly not here to shop. We're driving around. Uh, we don't have any really focus. Why are we you know, circling the mall? Why are we going in and out? What are we looking for? That would be an indicator right away. Both Tabman and Officer Cohen say metal detectors and similar prevention tactics will likely never happen in such public places. It's simply not feasible and it would cost too much. If you have a question on your mind and want us to answer it, email me at goodquestion at kctv5.com. I'm Joe Chiotto, KCTV5 News.